Hey guys, what's up and welcome to Love Inspire Space on the internet and welcome to the Is It Love series in honor of Domestic Violence Awareness Month. I'm your girl Angie, the founder of Love Inspire, where our mission is to build more powerful, transparent, and durable relationships. We're all about having healthy relationships over here. And in order to have a healthy relationship, you need to know what is not healthy. And that's what we're doing a six part series for in honor, like I said, of Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So welcome to episode two, The Elephant in the Room. Alright guys, let's jump right into our get educated with a quick fact before we get into today's video. This reads, half of all homeless women and children in the US are fleeing from domestic violence. This came from www.dosomething.org. I really wanted to share this particular quote because of the homelessness in it. Most of the time, homelessness has a stigma on top of it that this person put themselves in the position to be out on the street. If you really think about it, most people that are homeless probably didn't ask to be there. It's just the situation that they were given forced them to be in that situation. And this goes to show that with homeless women and homeless children fleeing from domestic violence homes. So I wanted to share this quote just to make sure that we are not judging when we're seeing homeless people. We don't know anybody's situation, just like we don't know anybody's situation that's living in the mansion. So let's be mindful of this and conscious when we see homeless people and understand that they're not all just trying to make a quick buck. So let's talk about the first thing that most people hear, the elephant in the room of domestic violence can't happen to me. Well, the fact is one in four women will experience domestic violence and one in seven men will experience domestic violence. So it can happen to you. And what I want you guys to be aware of is that most of the time you don't see it coming because people start out charismatic. People start out as lovey-dovey. And this is why I always try to teach and practice building your foundation. Because eventually if you take it slow enough and you work the stages and you work the steps of a relationship, guess what? You're going to find out this person's true colors before it is too late. So understand that domestic violence can happen to you and don't judge people because you haven't experienced it. The second thing that I want to talk about is people saying that survivors are stupid for returning to their abusers. Now here's the thing with this. Another part of the reason why I'm doing this series is to make sure that people stop judgment on domestic violence. It's such a fragile thing and a lot of the times we make judgments on something because we haven't experienced, we don't know what it's like to go through it. And this is something that I really truly want people to get educated on, especially if you are an avid follower of mine. Domestic violence is something very serious and it's something that we need to talk about. When it comes to survivors, it takes seven times for a survivor to leave their partner. That means they're gonna keep going back, they're gonna keep trying to make it work. And here's the thing that I want you to think about. How many times have you went back to somebody that has done something stupid to you, that has lied to you, that has cheated to you? Whether you went back to be in a relationship, whether you went back just to have sex with them, if you went back, think about the reason why you went back. It's because most of the time you feel comfortable. And it's the same thing with these women Men and men that experience this right if you are being financially taken care of by this person and all of a sudden you leave and you go to a dv shelter all of a sudden now you have to figure things out on your own you're not going to have what you're used to have you're going to have to you know work you're going to have to do all of these things that you're not used to and it could be very very hard on you think about if you are a person that went through childhood neglect childhood abuse, maybe sexual assault, maybe you got um, beat by your parents a lot, whatever the case may be, and then you um, meet this person that just knocks you off of your feet and they slowly try to manipulate you into thinking that they're the only person that loves you and all of a sudden, because they've been working on you so long, you start to believe it and that just is what happened. That's why you keep going back to them because they have made you believe that they are the only person that will take care of you and that loves you. These are all things to think about in the impact of abuse. Your children, people that have children involved, right? They may not be a shitty parent, but they're a bad partner. People go back for those reasons. So survivors are not stupid for going back. They just have to find their sense of self again. To the third thing that I wanna discuss is men can't be abused by women. And this is totally, totally false. Men can be abused by women. How women talk to men, 
how they can belittle men, how they can demean men. It happens every single day. And guess what? I have been on that end where I have not spoken to my husband very nicely. It's not a um, something that I am bragging about or something that I am proud about, but it is my truth. And it is something that I have been conscious of as I have gone throughout my marriage. Where you say nasty things, even if you don't mean them, it's still verbal abuse. You're still, um, you know, saying that when you're saying these nasty things and you're saying things to belittle somebody that is verbal abuse so if you're a woman argues with your husband that argues with your boyfriend and you start um, saying nasty things to them that's a sign that's a um, sign of verbal abuse and that's something that you need to get a hold on in a grasp the fourth thing that I want to talk about is the fact that some people think they must have did something for that to happen to them well here's the thing when you are talking about domestic violence right most of the time, it's not about you, it's about the person, the other person. It's not about the abusee, it's about the abuser. Everything that they have going on, and we talked about projection yesterday, right? So if you, again, like if you have had a um, trauma in your childhood, if you have experienced things, right? If you have grown up in a household where you've seen domestic violence, you are most likely going to be domestically violent to your significant other. I have heard people literally say before that this person deserved this or they must have done something to make this happen and it makes my blood boil because there's no reason why you should be domestically abusing somebody whether it is verbal or whether it is physical the thing is also nobody can make you do anything you make choices you make decisions to do as you please you make decisions to knock somebody up over the head you make decisions to decide today you're going to cuss them out nobody can force you to do anything so that's not true that they must have did something for this to happen it's just not the case like i said projection is a really really big thing and it's something that we need to work on in relationships because how we grew up is how we're going to be within our relationship unless we take accountability and start changing and the last thing is domestic violence is only physical listen i'm gonna nip this in the bud right now there is nothing that is more important than understanding that domestic violence goes beyond the physical. And if you listen to my podcast that I did a couple of weeks ago on how domestic violence is also verbal abuse too, right? We don't think of domestic violence as verbal and emotional, right? Most of us think of it as physical assault, but it goes deeper. And I just posted something on social media yesterday about how those scars are sometimes not visible to the eye. Those scars are internal. Those scars are in people's minds. Those scars are ingrained in them forever. And we talked about some of these things yesterday. Um, the financial state. It's all about mind control when you're dealing with somebody that is abusing you. Anybody that is trying to control your opinion, trying to control your thoughts. Make sure you have a partner that is respectful of your opinion. Now, not saying that they have to agree with everything you say because you're not going to be right on everything and you probably won't make sense on everything too even though it sounds right in your little head. However, never, never let somebody take your voice away from you. Now, of course, you want a partner that's going to challenge you. You want a partner that is going to make you think. You want a partner that is going to understand, like I said, not necessarily agree, but choose to understand where you're coming from. Okay, babe, I get that. I don't necessarily agree with that, but I can understand why you're thinking the way you're thinking. And like I said, going back to that foundation, when you're building in that foundation, you can say that with sincerity because you have learned from this person how they grew up. A lot of the times how we grew up is how we're thinking. So when you understand that about your partner, you can say, oh, I understand why you would think that way. Not that you agree with it, like I keep saying, but I understand that. So never let somebody take your voice and understand that it goes beyond the physical part of it. Like I said earlier, anytime we're being nasty to our partner, anytime we are trying to control people, anytime we get into an argument with our significant other and we start splewing off these venom, um, all of that can fall into a domestic violence bracket. Remember that abusers are all about getting in control. Hey guys, this is Ange checking in to end today's video. If you like what you saw, please make sure you give it a thumbs up, only if you like it. And if you wanna join the fam, subscribe and stick around as we talk about everything love, relationships, and hope. 
how to's, inspirational stuff, all that good stuff. But for the month of October, we will be talking about domestic violence and bringing awareness to it since it is the month that we honor all of our survivors and people that are currently going through domestic violence. I'll see you guys all in tomorrow's video as we talk about the signs and behaviors of an abuser. Have a blessed, blessed day. Thank you.